The first 12 episodes of Eden Zero have just hit Netflix and today I want to talk about why I love this series and why you guys should go check it out. Aboard the Eden Zero, a lonely boy with the ability to control gravity embarks on an adventure to meet the fabled space goddess known as Mother. What's going on guys, here we all having a great day today, and today we are here to talk about the latest Netflix anime series from the creator of Fairy Tale, that being Eden Zero. Now this is like a space exploration type series, and if you know me, you know that I absolutely love sci-fi, but my favourite like story structure, storytelling within sci-fi is when you get just a, a ragtag group of characters together and they just go out on a space journey, flying through space, visiting different planets, meeting all these different alien species, and that is exactly what this series provides. I'll start off by talking about the characters, and these are just a fun bunch of characters. I don't think they have the most depth to them so far, but again, we are only 12 episodes into this series, so there is going to be a lot more expanding on these characters. But so far, I really love Rebecca and Happy and their relationship. We get a little bit of a backstory to them, which is really quite heartfelt, and they are the real heart and soul of the show. But they're just a lot of fun to be around. They just have a great dynamic together. And then you add Shiki into this duo that we have already. And he is just like a fun fish out of water type character. I love the scenarios he gets himself into. He wants to be friends with absolutely everyone. And sometimes that makes for some absolutely hilarious scenes. Shiki also has powers relating to gravity and that is something that is played into the series. There are these ether abilities and there are some other characters within the show that have that. For example, Professor Steiner. He can work a lot with machinery and technology so he uses guns a lot in the series and he can make them do different things. For example, he turns into like a flamethrower at some point. He massively upgrades the ship at some point as well. And then there's a character we're introduced to within the last few episodes called Homura. And whilst we don't know a whole lot about her so far, we do have these little inklings of uh, you know, her past relationship with her teacher that is you know gonna tie into the main plot but she has this sword that she can use and she's just a completely badass character so i'm very excited to see more of her there's also a lot of other characters that were introduced to they're not necessarily major characters within this series but for example there's someone called elsie crimson and i assume we're going to see more of her in the future but she's a space pirate and just space pirates are so badass when you get like these you know rogue bounty hunter type characters within a world it just kind of expands it out. You know, you dive into the criminal underworld, but then you've also got you know the the government uh, type military that are after as well. It's just world expansion, and this series does a great job at setting all these pieces into play to make this universe feel vast. Speaking of vastness within the universe, there is a scene at the end of the first episode where we leave the planet that Shiki's been his whole life, and there's something so effective about not seeing the rest of the world. For example, like recently, Star Wars The Bad Batch, there's a great scene at the end of the first episode where the Bad Batch and Omega you know, go out in space, Omega's experienced in space for the first time. But of course, you know, within Star Wars, we've experienced the universe. Within that first episode of The Bad Batch, we also experienced the universe. What I like about Eden Zero is you don't get to see the rest of the universe until the end of that episode and you're experiencing it at the same time as Shiki. You just put a massive smile on my face and I, I've not had that for a while when it comes to you know series and just having that feeling of adventure, having that feeling of just experiencing something for the first time. It's an indescribable feeling that I just absolutely adore and that is exactly what the best sci-fi should do. I love the story that's set up here, the mystery surrounding it as well, of course, you know, we're after this fabled goddess of mother, and she seems to have some tie into Shiki's past, maybe, but we don't really know much about it. There's just a great mystery going on, and I can't really predict exactly where it's going to go, but I'm very excited to see it play out. So far, we've had a great balance of, like, filler and plot. We're going on these adventures. That is what this series is about. Sometimes, we're completely diverging off course and going to these random planets, and, you know, so, some stuff comes up, comes into play that distracts you from the main storyline, but I still think there is, there's obviously a plot there, and there's a plot that is never in the background as such. It's, you know... Sometimes it takes a little bit of a backseat, but I think it never forgets that there is a plot at play. It doesn't leave it for 10 episodes or whatever to then come back to that plot. It's always in the background. There's always a purpose to go in somewhere. We always get something out of it when it seems like filler. There's always something that will tie into the plot in some way. And that's what some space exploration type series can do sometimes. They go out of the way and become very filler-esque. The Mandalorian does it a little bit sometimes and things like Star Trek, they tend to do it a lot. But I think this series finds that right balance between plot and adventure of the week. 
Now I'm going to go into very minor spoilers here for something that comes into play probably about the middle of the season. It's not a major plot spoiler per se, but it could potentially spoil how they get out of what's happening in the first arc. So you don't want any spoilers for this series and I would recommend going into it, you know, spoiler free. As with any other series, I'm going to talk about spoilers in 3, 2 and 1. So let's talk spoilers. So the first major arc of this series involves Shiki, Rebecca and Happy going to look for someone called Professor Steiner who has a history with Rebecca and Happy and they head to a planet which somehow puts them 50 years in the past. Now at the end of this arc we find out that they were not put 50 years in the past but actually the time has been taken away from this planet so the planet itself is just 50 years behind what it would have been otherwise. And we find out that this thing going around called a chronophage, it's sort of like a black hole in a way, but instead of consuming the planet itself, it just consumes the time of the planet. So in this scenario, it's taken away 50 years of time from this planet, and this planet is now just stuck, you know, 50 years in the past. It creates this sense of danger that's always going to be there. You're on a planet, and you know, there's danger within the planet, but at the end of the arc, you know, you feel like... This chronophage is coming, it's going to take away the time from this planet. There is a sense of emergency to it. It's also a unique idea. I don't think I've ever seen this thing in my life. Something that comes and takes away the time of a planet. It's just so different. It's fascinating and there's so much within this series that I can't wait to see expanded upon. For example, like the dragons flying round and things. It is such a unique world that I am so, so excited to dive into a lot more. So with all that in mind, I'm going to give Eden Zero Season 1 an A. So that was my review of the first 12 episodes of Eden Zero. If you could make sure to leave a like on this video as it does really help out the channel. And also consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video and want to see plenty more Netflix and anime content from me. I will have a August 2021 Netflix anime ranking coming within the coming days. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Also let me know down in the comment section below if you've seen Eden Zero. What did you think of it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you right in the middle? And will you be tuning in for the next episodes when they come out? But as always guys, thank you for tuning in to Chat today. And remember, even in the worst of times, there's always entertainment. See you guys next time.